I am sure you are familiar with terms like force, displacement, velocity and acceleration when studying linear motion of objects. In rotational motion, however, the equivalents are torque, angular displacement, angular velocity and you guessed it, angular acceleration. Torque is force that turns and twists. You can see that the air did truly love it. To move things in a straight line, you need to apply force. To turn things, you need to apply torque. And apart from magnitude and direction of the force, there's two more factors involved here. A pivot or fulcrum, the distance from the pivot at which force is applied. Look at this bicycle with its pedal perfectly vertical. The bicycle won't move an inch if the force is acting absolutely straight down. Heck, you can put an elephant on the damn thing. Things will only move if there is a little offset and therefore a turning motion and a torque. Try holding equal weights in each hand, but in two different ways. If they are available, you might as well use them. You'll notice that your outstretched arm gets tired sooner because while both arms are feeling the force of the weight, hey, wait, baby! The outstretched arm is feeling the additional load of a twisting force or torque. If you bend your arm at the elbow, you'll be able to hold the weight slightly longer because torque is force multiplied by distance and if you reduce the distance, you reduce torque. That's why door handles are stuck far away from the hinge, you get more leverage that way. Using the same logic, if you have to keep a heavy load on the rooftop of a building like, I don't know, some construction material or an air conditioning unit, it's better for the floor if you keep the load closer to the wall so there is less twisting force or as they call it in structural engineering, bending moment. The difference is torque, things move, bending moment, you do not want things to move. And that brings us to an interesting quirk of structural engineering. These are of course the pyramids, the only one from the seven wonders of the ancient world that still stand and that's a testament to their structural stability. They taper as they go up and that makes them very very stable. I mean try tipping a building over, easy peasy, but try tipping a pyramid over, it's quite difficult what with that wide base and low center of gravity. But oddly enough some buildings use the exact opposite building technique. They actually get bigger as they move up, a technique most commonly seen in medieval timber buildings. Medieval timber buildings. I said medieval timber build. <laughs> A process known as jettying, it seems like the opposite of logic, but it's actually very, very clever. You see, because of the bending moment, floors tend to sag. But if the walls are offset, the weight of the walls now provides a balancing moment that straightens the beam out, and that's just brilliant. Plus, you get a bigger room. But this has limitations, you can't use it for really tall structures because the high center of gravity would make them very unstable. Interesting side note, this is the exact opposite of what they do in New York City where buildings have to be set back as they grow taller. Because if they were perfectly straight, they would block out sunlight. Now let's talk about torque in the context of vehicles and I don't mean crappy early 2000s movies with unrealistic stunts. Now for an engine running at low RPM, there is less fuel coming in and hence a small explosion which makes the crank turn with not as much force and therefore less torque. But if the engine is running at a higher speed, you have more fuel coming in, bigger explosion and the piston makes the crank slam down harder with more torque. But vehicle specs say things like, it makes its peak torque at so and so RPM and that RPM number if you've noticed is always lower than the max RPM. Why is that? Well, let's draw a torque curve, which is basically a graph of RPM versus torque. So it's quite obvious that if we increase the RPM, the torque also increases. But as you go higher, you'll notice that the gradient becomes less steep and you eventually flatten out for a while and then the torque actually goes down with increased RPM. That's because at higher revs, factors like friction, ignition delay, too little time for effective combustion, airflow complications, and other mechanical and material limitations start affecting the engine. Basically, after a certain speed, you hit a wall. That's why torque curves look like this and not like this. In fact, if you look at this torque curve of a Volvo truck engine, you'll notice that not just torque, even horsepower goes down after a certain limit because horsepower is dependent on torque. So basically at high speed, things start going to shit. But speed isn't the only way to increase torque. I mean, you could always build a bigger engine or if you could make the stroke of the engine longer in relation to the bore, but that's a topic for another video. For now, thanks for watching. Please like, share and subscribe and support us on Patreon and do leave suggestions in the comments about what kind of videos you like to see. See you in the next one.